This special three-part series of Bond Park is supported by HIP Developments, a real estate development company that goes beyond building real estate. HIP believes it's their job to help build cities, especially in Waterloo Region, which the company and many employees call home. Real city building requires collaborative effort and infrastructure for the human spirit, the kind of things that bring us all together and celebrate our inventiveness, diversity, and allow us to discover collective joy. Mel Brown was, and still is, part of that collective joy waiting to be discovered through this broadcast. Speaking of joy, HIP Development's president, Scott Higgins, recently published a remarkable new book, The Joy Experiments, starting a new conversation on city building. The book invites all of us to consider the importance of our communities, what they can do for us, and what we should be doing for our cities. Pick up your copy at thejoyexperiments.com. It's a joyful read, we promise. Legendary blues musician Mel Brown brought the sound of the Mississippi Delta to Waterloo Region. And although Mel himself is gone, his legacy lives on. In celebration of that legacy, the region was recently home to the inaugural Mel Brown Music Festival and Symposium, and it happened May 27th through 29th, 2022, at the Jazz Room, Maxwell's Music House, Kitchener Public Library, and the Museum. Welcome to Vaughn Park, I'm Sarah Geidlinger. And I'm Marshall Ward, and we are so honored to be sharing with you part three of our special three-part series on the inaugural Mel Brown Music Festival and Symposium. Here we go. Welcome to Vaughn Park. Welcome Welcome to to Vaughn Park. Park. Welcome to Bond Park. Welcome to Bond Park. us a favor can you please leave us a five-star review like or subscribe to our show and share with your friends we'd also love it if you followed us on social media we are a homegrown community project and every bit helps on with the show this is it just days before the festival sarah and i visited the kpl theater for the last session of a hip-hop workshop for black youth facilitated by john corbin my name is John Corbin. Uh, I'm a high school teacher by day and a creative by night. I've been in the creative world for about 20 years. I started in Waterloo Region as a student at Wilfrid Laurier, first as a radio host and a DJ, concert promoter, uh, became a writer, a hip-hop writer, poet, uh, podcaster, and a whole bunch of great stuff. I've developed a program called Spark Rap Coaching that takes young people through the process of writing a hip-hop song. Uh, And I believe that there's uh, a wealth of creativity and skill in it that can impact uh, a student's life going forward, skills that they can build, as well as contributing to the work of anti-racism. You know, being a high school teacher for 15 years, there's there's a lot I can pull into it, um, but it's really, you know, the idea of experiential learning is something that um, maybe I wish was more. I wish there was more than the classroom. Um, so we really want students to be able to uh, engage. First of all, where they are to be able to sort of uh, acknowledge and self-identify um, their place in this work of creativity, and then from there, um, try and provide nuggets of information that will propel them forward. So it's experience teaching, experience teaching, sort of this back and forth model. Um, but one of the things uh, that's really important to me is just wherever the student is, that's where, that's where we start. And so it makes for uh, a fun and dynamic experience, at least for me, because there's nothing cookie cutter about it. Um, but then also when you do it in a group setting, you can foster uh, positivity, you can foster leadership, as you see some students have uh, strengths in different areas. Um, so it really uh, starts... It starts with me and kicking things off, but then um, moving forward, a a group dynamic takes over. One of the advantages of this work right now is talking about the history of hip hop because it's such a ubiquitous art form and has such a significant influence on uh, our world in so many different ways. um, It's all around us to this point, but there's fewer and fewer people that understand its history um, and so we can com- we, c- we get together under um, the mantle of 
either the creative experience or our interest in hip hop. And then from there, um, we can talk about the essence of it and its origin, which is the four tenets, peace, love, unity, and having fun. So, um, so it does come with me in some of our check-in activities and some of our early exchanges. Um, that I need to be uh, positive and uh, peaceful and fun-loving, but uh, very co quickly connecting that to the history that exists, that this is what we do as part of the hip-hop culture. Mel Brown, um, you know, I came up in, at you know, Laurie in the early aughts, and, um, and Mel Brown's legacy was still, like, was still there, was palpable in the, in the music scene, um, and, and what, he, what he had done. And then uh, both of these guys, Lee and, and Carlos. Carlos is someone I've met in recent in recent months. As uh, I've been co uh, co writing an educational resource on hip hop and social justice. Carlos has been on the advisory council for that, and it's been really great to connect with more people to understand the, the history of hip hop, especially in the Canadian context. We get a chance to speak with John about his podcast project as well. Yeah. So the John Corbin podcast, which is you know the creatively titled podcast that it is does encompass um, my experiences or the themes that I, I hold dear when it comes to uh, creative work. It's creativity itself, inspiration, community, and learning. These are things that um, are really important to me. What I found is that over 20s, almost, yeah, 20-ish years of being involved in the creative world, the thing that stands out to me the most is stories. And so I wanted to shape a place um, uh, where we could tell stories. I remember organizing a studio session, this is about seven years ago, uh, to work on a song with a, and, and in the room were a variety of uh, people who had long-standing history in Canadian hip hop. And they just, I invited them, it was so and so studio and such and such an artist, and it, it was hard to get to work because of all the storytelling. And I thought, you know, I have those things as well, and I'm respecting these people that have more experience than me. So I have these things. I remember this show at the circus room or the boathouse or when we went to Wilfs and, you know, and, and Shad, who was just like graduated and was headlining the concert. Like, you know, what, that was one of the best shows I ever went to was when I organized at Wilfs in 2005 and I've been able to keep going. So I thought, why not create a space where we can tell those stories? And the hope is that some of the, some of the personal stuff would be ubiquitous or be universal. And at the same time, I would pursue learning so from there it's um, people that I've come in contact with and we've learned something from each other or I'm learning from them so uh, yeah it's my own pursuit of finding those stories reminiscing a little bit seeing where the universal truths are in terms of creativity inspiration how that might help other people and so yeah that's the that's the goal <laughs> we asked John Corbin about his approach to teaching in his hip-hop workshop so it's a coaching, it's a it's a coaching approach, right? So a uh, student will be in a certain place with certain abilities. Um, I'm not sure right now where we are partway through this session where all the students are with music. La uh, last week they left with drum patterns, right? So we might be building something out today. Um, Nigel has the musical ability and went to school for it, and he wanted to take his own. So where where is each each student? I think there's one student. That we said you only need a drum beat. That's the way that you've written and the the vibe that you possess. You only need a drum beat. So at this point, it's um, it's a tightrope in a sense to make sure that um, we've got a balance of encouraging a student forward. But if they have never picked up the mic before, we can't really sweat too much about you know the, what what the music sounds like. It, it all has to come together in some way. But it's unique every time. So yeah, this will be a fun session. Some people like the microphone and some people do not like the microphone. Got our musical theater folks in the back there, ready, like, I had to keep them away from the microphone. <laughs> All of you put in outstanding work and, um, and the work is really moving. Um, I spoke to everyone individually, but I'll just say this as a group. The showcase is designed to showcase the work that we've done over the last four weeks. It's not about a perfected song, it's about the work that we've done. And so, based on what was shared, I do not want to deprive anyone of the opportunity of hearing this stuff. 
If you think about it, no one had done this before. And there's real truth in what you're saying. It's done artistically and it's very moving. But it is work that we've done. And I'd like us to consider that in terms of a showcase. The Black Youth Music Showcase, facilitated by John Corbin, happened on March 28th at Maxwell's Music House. I remember playing the other location of Maxwell's when it was about the size of that stage. And I've been doing this song for a long time. It's really about the essence of hip hop, which is peace, love, unity, and having fun. So this one's about having fun. And now you're gonna help me with this. Yeah. Somebody say have a good time. Say have a good time. Say have a good time. Put your hands up high if you're feeling the vibe. Say have a good time. 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 Oh, good times. I got the good lines and the reach of the prize. Put them hands to the sky like good times. We got the good lines. Ain't no hands for the prize. Listen, this one's for all the people who forgot to grudge. Spend time looking for hugs and not the other drug and do super. I was told it was a lot of cool kids singing they super smooth like cool food. I got some James Brown, Jungle Group, Bigfoot. Believe in words of the good books to take a good look. We MCs are giving you something to vibe. We in the place celebrating the good Time. Something to get into. Give me a minute to get in the mood for the dudes. You can get excused. We feeling do something to chase the wind. I'm gonna sing it smooth as Mr. Snoop on Jimmy Juice. For the women who wanna clean your move, left, right, flowing on air like an interview. In conclusion, the silly tunes been delivered you. Got a baddest brothers in a cruise. It's when you have a good time. Say, have a good time. Say, have a good time. When we heard the aspiring young hip-hop artists at the showcase, Marshall and I were incredibly impressed with how far they had come even in the few days since the last workshop. Like actually to the stage, N- Nigel had a very strong sense of rhythm and where he wanted to go. It's his musical training, but it surprised us all when we did our first little practice exercise and he was uh, delivering rhymes. We're like, "You sure you've never written before? Never, never." And uh, it continued to elevate um, week after week after week. I wanted to uh, tell this quick story because we, uh, you know, I been connected with the region for so long, but I haven't seen how beautiful the Kitchener Public Library is and, all, and, and its renovations over the years. So we're in this wonderful meeting space with these like what, big windows and clear glass doors, and it was just a wonderful environment for us that would allow us to run around the uh, the space. I mean, well, not, not around, just like if somebody oppressed us, we'd be, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And you know who caused the most of those responses was Ashley. Let's move along together as a nation. No need for 
microphones. I agree. Yes, you really do. Can you please, uh, we need to hear the chorus, um, just a cappella, so that, that that can land, especially the uh, French part as well. Okay. Um, my chorus is, the grass is green, the sky is blue, the clouds are white. What color of human do you think is right? Si je vous gêne, ben c'est la même. Let's move along together as a nation. No need for further separation. After the showcase, we spoke with Gun Ho, who's a graduate student in the community music program at Wilfrid Laurier University. He also served as a research assistant for John Corbin's workshop. Right, so we had over a month, we spent uh, four sessions working with these kids, and John was incredible. He would always start with some exercises to get us into a creative mindset, like free writing getting us to rhyme words and then we started talking about form and structure and rhyme and he would always ask us questions that would get us thinking about our identities, our purpose, our philosophy. It was really really inspiring to see some of the shyer students get up on stage that last day and just with such confidence speak their minds. It was very moving. On May 29th, the last day of the Mel Brown Music Festival and Symposium, Sarah and I headed to the museum in downtown Kitchener for an afternoon of music called Soul Inspiration, featuring performances by the Waterloo Region Mass Choir, Errol Blackwood, and festival headliner Miss Angel. Upon arrival, we chatted with Steve Strongman, uh, well, my name is Steve Strongman, born and raised here in KW, and I was very, very lucky to basically um, grow up listening to Mel, and uh, he really took me under his wing like he did with so many people. He's so incredibly generous with his time. And I used to play with Mel from the time I was about 16 years old on, and I'm still, uh, you know, I'm a professional musician, that's what I do, and there's no way I'd be able to do it if it wasn't for Mel. I have so many memories to reflect on when it comes to, to playing with Mel. One thing in particular is just that feeling of me being very young, and being exposed to a world-class artist like Mel. And I remember very vividly him handing me his Super 400 guitar, and I just thought that that was the coolest thing in the world, that he would let a teenager play his guitar like that. But, I mean, there was, there's so many things to talk about. He was generous like that, not only with me, but with so many people in the community. We asked uh, Steve Strongman to just share some personal insight on, uh, on knowing Mel Brown. He was always very gentle and he was teaching without actually you realizing that he was teaching. He would never tell you do this or don't do that. He wasn't like that at all. He was, he led by example. Um, as you said, he, he, he loved everybody. And I think he fell in love with, with Kitchener, with KW. And I, I would ask him many, many times, like, why Kitchener? What happened? And it, I think it was the community. He just loved being here so much and he fell in love with it and he didn't, that's all he wanted to do. He wanted to play music for people that love music in a great community. So it's, he was always a, uh, he was a very gentle leader. That's how I would put it. We had a lovely moment with Errol Blackwood out front of the museum in downtown Kitchener. We asked him about being a musician in Waterloo Region and also his time with Mel Brown. And he shares a really special song with us. Where I learned to play, um, my first time in, on a stage was uh, in Woodstock actually. But there was a band in Kitchener and um, a guy named Jackson Jones, he, he was his band. And so I followed them all around, they couldn't get rid of me. I just wanted to sing, you know. So they, they were playing in Woodstock, they had a matinee, and I, um, th they said I could come up and sing. So after I went up to sing, after that I followed, they get me everywhere to sing, you know. So it's cool. <laughs> Mel Brown and me, man, we, we, from the first time he came here, um, he, was, he used to play on Queen Street there, and they had a, a tuning night. And so I came there, that's where I met him. And from I met him, he's just like, he called me on stage without even knowing who I am, you know? And then from there, every time I'm, he's playing and I come down, call me up, hey babe, you know? Get on stage and um, jam with him, you know? It's really, that's like one of the greatest musicians, you know? And so humble. The greatest are always the humblest, you know? <laughs> Seems like. <laughs> I'm a 
Papa was a preacher Mama used to say I curl my seat Yeah, all right and I see Ooh, it's not just the preacher, not just the congregation, it's the man. So, Miss Angel Brown. She was a wife and musical partner of Mel Brown. And just like Mel Brown, she's a blues legend in Waterloo Region. I've seen Miss Angel perform so many times over the years, but I've never had the opportunity to speak with her before. But following Miss Angel's headlining performance at the museum on Sunday, May 29th, we actually got a chance to sit down and speak with her. I'm just your fool, can't help myself, still love you baby, and no one else, I ain't crazy. You're my baby, I'm just your fool I'm just your fool, I must confess Still love you baby, and take your mess I ain't crazy, you're my baby I'm just your fool Treat me the way you do I ask you please for mercy, baby Please let me be happy too But if you leave me for someone new I buy me a shotgun, aim it straight at you I ain't lying, no sense diving I'm just your Miss Angel, I prefer, and my band, uh, the keyboard player and the bass player, they were Mel Brown's band, Home Records, and Magic, the drummer, used to sub when Boudreaux couldn't make it, but now he's like a fixture, and I love him so much and appreciate him for playing for me. We asked Miss Angel about the song Just Your Fool and the beautiful footage you can find on YouTube of her and Mel Brown performing it. They had that on YouTube and I didn't actually know that that was going to happen. I was working on my CD, uh, That's the Way I Tumble. And so Mel had a little uh, 
little old Gibson guitar, acoustic, and we're in the studio, and he playing it, and so I had the headphones on, so I sang it. I had no idea that they were taping it, and that it was gonna be on YouTube. When I see it, I was like, what? You know, but that's how that came about, and then I sang it, and the people like it, and they asked for it, so I keep singing. They always want to hear I'm just your fool, so, yeah. As lifelong locals of the Waterloo region, Marshall and I were curious if Mel Brown ever had a favorite venue to play at, and we asked Miss Angel about this, and her sister chimes in. Baby, man, no, he, he didn't care. Played, he would man. play. That's for what I know. He played the same way in the backyard, on the riverbank, a house party, as he did on a big stage. Yeah. The music was, and he put it out, and he gave 150% each time he picked a, up a guitar. If you had a keyboard, he would, he would, he would give me the keyboard, and it would be the same thing. He just like, he was, he was like, I can't explain it. He, he made everything. On my last CD I did with Sean oh, Kellerman, no. he was, such a damn man. So uh, uh, down in Mississippi, it's a song on there called Stray Dog, and Mel was playing everything, and he programmed the drum machine, but he's playing the rhythm, the lead, and whatever music you hear on there, he's doing the whole thing. Just him. When I think about that long, long list of all these performers that Mel Brown performed with, and names that some people may not know, like Sonny and Cher, David Bowie, Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson, one name that really uh, I, I, I'd love to know more about is uh, he performed with Doris Day one time, and we asked Miss Angel about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, she had a sitcom, 30-minute show, where she was on the farm, and then she went to New York. This was a segment of the show to do modeling. And the guitar you hear when she gets to New York and modeling, that's Mel Brown. That's the connection. I've been such a big fan of Errol Blackwood for so many years, and when he got up on stage this afternoon to play with Miss Angel, I was so thrilled. So we asked her what that's like to perform with Errol Blackwood. Oh, oh, oh. I just love Earl so much. He's so wonderful. And we often, if we're in the same place, playing the same place, either he's going to get up with me or I'm going to get up with him, but we're going to do some togetherness when we're both in the same room. Throughout this entire weekend that was the Mel Brown Music Festival and Symposium, we heard educators, musicians, promoters, producers, community builders of all kinds reiterate a common thread that was Mel Brown's life. Like a blues riff through a song, he taught and inspired others with quiet leadership. He stood back and watched them blossom, finding their own creative path in our community. Well, Mel didn't like to tell nobody what to do. He would like to plant a seed to give you food for thought. He would never say, oh, you did this wrong, or you shouldn't did this, but he would say something to you that would make your mind think about it. And that's the way he taught. That's why he was so good at it. Whether they saw him perform at the Boathouse, the Flying Dog, Pop the Gator, or the Kitchener Blues Festival, countless local blues fans will attest that over the past 30 plus years, Mel Brown inserted love into their lives through his inimitable guitar playing and his honest, soulful voice. Before we hear from Darren Hamilton of the Waterloo Region Mass Choir and a song with them, we asked Carlos Morgan to recap the weekend. I think it was spectacular. Um, as you mentioned, Sarah, Friday evening was uh, was magical indeed. Uh, Joni and Alicia and Rufus at the jazz room and everybody there and just the energy and the vibe. Um, you know, when people are just being cooped up for the past two and a half years and then the jazz room in itself is just, it's a special, it's got a special vibe I find. So having the first night turn out to be the way it was and the way, the way it did, again, was, was magical and I'm just so grateful for that night. Um, and the, the camaraderie between Rufus, Alicia, and Joni. And you could feel it and see that. And they're just, I just, I just loved being in the background supporting. And of course, I had to get up and jam a little bit because I heard okay. that, I heard, I heard that groove. 
that uh, Alicia was putting down, I was like, oh, I said, could I get on? But that was fun. And then the last night at the Kitchener Public Library, yeah, with, uh, with Sam Navy curating the Young Emerging Artist Showcase with Malik and Quentin Barnes and Eloquent and just highlighting and showing the young talent that's in this region in hip hop. And then we got into the, the, the concerts with Glenn Mariah and Moja Train and Akaya and then of course Havaya Mighty. That just took it to a next level. It was like, I felt like it was a stepping stone, just like Friday night, but definitely a stepping stone with Glenn and then Akaya taking it higher. And then Havaya just with everybody just pumping their fist and then right in front of the audience. It just it was a great night. It was energetic, energetic, and I heard from some people they thought it was so energetic that there was a buzz. They felt like energized. And then today, you know, with with starting with Waterloo Mass Choir and bringing the spiritual and the gospel and the soulful and preaching the message of Jesus Christ and love and coming together and healing and encouragement. And then you know, Errol Black with the reggae vibes and Miss Angel with the blues, just the various genres of black music that were featured and highlighted. This is, this is what I wanted. I want, this is what I wanted to show that, that Kitchener-Waterloo has a black music scene here. And so to be given the opportunity to be a part of this festival with Lee and Nathan, Nathan Stress, Lee Willingham, and the rest of the team, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, I'm grateful, I was emotional. Um, I'm overwhelmed, I'm tired, um, I'm going to take a couple of days, just relax and reflect, but, and again, I cannot thank the both of you, Sarah and Marshall, for your support, for your love, for your encouragement, I'm, you know, thank you all so, so much, man. What I'm going to remember most is Friday night. Um, more than the performances, was the audience um, and how open I felt how open they were and seeing people dance and seeing smiling faces and people connecting again and talking with each other talking to each other and seeing people walk out and just the positive energy that was all around for me that is what I'm going to remember most of all for this weekend just, and yeah just the joy that I saw everybody have um, and it was again it was a full house you know, I was on Facebook, and again, Sarah, thanks for all the great photos you, you took. Beautiful shots, beautiful pictures. And looking at the pictures and seeing the smiling faces, and yeah, that for me is, for this weekend, is what I'm going to remember most this Friday night. Sarah and I would like to thank Carlos Morgan, Lee Willingham, and the Kitchener Public Library. We made so many new friends over the weekend, and we want to thank everyone who took the time to speak to us. Carlos and Lee, we can't thank you enough for bringing us along on this journey to the inaugural Mel Brown Music Festival and Symposium. Thank you. Carlos Morgan grew up singing gospel, R&B, and reggae. And we can only imagine how emotional that was to see the Warloo Region Mass Choir perform. Sarah and I sat down and we were just so taken back by this powerful performance. Here's Darren Hamilton of the Warloo Region Mass Choir. My name is Darren Hamilton and I'm the artistic director and co-founder of the Waterloo Region Mass Choir. And this is a community gospel choir. We've been around in the KW area for four years now, since 2018. I am a choral conductor and, and also a music educator. Um, and uh, it is just an honor to be able to, uh, to lead a group of gospel music. Um, gospel music conducting is very different from you know traditional choral conducting. Um, so you're not just doing a deep beat pattern, but you're um, you're really engaging the choir in being able to internalize the music and then bring out the music uh, in their singing and in their voices. You know, with gospel choir music, um, there is no sheet music, so they're not reading off of a score. And so the conductor in gospel music is the score. Uh, we are giving cues for the choir and the band as to the musical form of the piece, you know, giving cues for when we're moving on to the next section, uh, when we're singing in unison versus when we're singing in three-part harmony. Um, and so all of the, the, the cues, both the musical cues and the vocal cues are being communicated through um, the conductor. And then of course, 
gospel music has a lot of energy and so the conductor's role is, uh, is to help the choir to, to keep the energy up and just to remind them uh, to keep that energy up as they're performing. You know, Carlos and I actually go back a long time. Um, in my very first year of teaching, in, uh, when I started teaching in the Peel District School Board, uh, I invited Carlos to be a guest speaker for my vocal music class. So he did a whole week of vocal workshops on R&B music. And uh, we just stayed in contact over the years. It's been over 10 years since I've known Carlos. And, uh, and ironically, I moved to Kitchener in uh, 2017 along with my wife. And Carlos ended up uh, getting connected to Wilfred Laurier uh, through his community music graduate program. And so uh, we just happened to get connected in the same city. And so when he was planning the conference, um, he just reached out to ask if a Waterloo Region Mass Choir could be a part of it. Carlos, you know, he is, he's definitely a He's, he's a, a, a class act, he's a, a great performer, great, um, a great communicator. He exudes so much uh, positive energy and um, you know what he's doing here with the, the, the symposium and the festival in terms of um, just bringing awareness to the legacy of Mel Brown through this festival is just an amazing thing and also creating opportunities for um, artists, marginalized and racialized um, artists, black artists uh, in the KW area to be able to have um, a presence and a space to share their music is just an amazing thing. And so um, I, my hats go off to Carlos. I can only imagine how much work it's been planning this symposium, but he's done, he's, him and the committee have done an amazing job. We asked Darren Hamilton all about the Waterloo Region Mass Choir's song, Not Powerless, which we're closing out the show with. Thanks everybody for joining us. You know what, Not Powerless was written by myself uh, 10 years ago and uh, I was at a, a point in time in my life where, uh, to be honest, I was going through a period of depression and, and just feeling really um, powerless, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, just going through a lot of you know emotional issues, um, financial issues, uh, social issues, relationship issues and uh, through my, you know, I grew up in a, in a uh, a church and I was had a strong faith in, in God and, and you know I grew up in the, on the Christian faith and so um, you know as I was going through that period of time I was just reminded that um, although things don't look great that um, that there is hope and and I can find strength and hope to get through those circumstances through prayer and so uh, the song just kind of got deposited one day I was just sitting and I just started thinking about what was going on and as I shared earlier in the concert the words came to me you know uh, things might seem hopeless and you've accepted that your hands are tied and I as I those words came to me I, I literally imagined myself like like tied up like my hands are tied I'm against the wall and I can't do anything about the situation that I'm going through but even in that state I'm able to use my mouth and I'm able to pray and I'm able to pray to God and, and ask God for help through that situation and so that's where that song came from I know that uh, we've been going through a very challenging situ situation with the pandemic with wars with so many different things going on in our world in the past few years and uh, we felt when we were planning to do our EP recording that this would be such an appropriate song uh, to be the lead single and the title track for our EP. You have been going through your storm Wondering when the sun will shine The pressures of life seem so unbearable and all you can do is hide in your room and shut the door Cause you just can't deal with life no more The issues are way beyond control And giving up seems like the best resource
provision, there's provision when you Bond Park is made possible with the support of the Kitchener Public Library and the Kitchener-Waterloo Community Foundation. Our show is produced by Sarah Geidlinger and Marshall Ward with audio engineering by Sarah Geidlinger. Bond Park's original music is by Alan Lung. <laughs>